everyone. I'm Vicki at Creative Notions and it's time to show you how to make this quilt right here. Isn't that pretty? With all of these pinwheels, double pinwheels. They're so cute. This month in our subscription box we sent out some of these papers and they were specifically designed for us by Sugar and Spice Studios and Sugar and Spice Textiles both. Um, look how pretty this is. Now these are the papers that come in the pack and I've done this um, video in a couple of parts. The other day when I was showing Margaret, my friend, how to make these pinwheels, Danielle grabbed my phone and decided it would be a great idea to go ahead and video it. So you will get that in just a second. But I wanted to talk about these papers first. This paper is especially made for us and it is two-sided. So it's not really traditional paper piecing. It's similar, but we have the print on both sides. So it makes it double easy. And when you go to um, make your, your little block, there's a front side and there's a back side. Now, if you put all of your fabrics on the front side, your pinwheel will go clockwise. If you put your fabric on the back side and sew on the front, then your pinwheel will go counterclockwise. So that's up to you, but um, you can choose whichever way you want. Now on the pattern, the pattern looks like the the pinwheels are going counterclockwise. This pinwheel quilt is going clockwise. Um, sorry, there's a scooter and he jumped on the table. Say hi, Scoot. He's my little rescue kitty who can't stay out of anything. He's just a mess. Okay, boy. Okay, so um, that explains a little bit about the papers. And I want to Show you what not to do too. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut the fabric for the pinwheels and then how to put them together. And then when we come back, I want to show you how not to make your block and how to put your rows together. So I'll be back in just a minute and I hope you can figure this out and it makes it easy for you to understand. And um, be right back. Thanks. Hi. We're so going to show you how you do these um, charm packs so that you get the cutting correct. And when I made the quilt that I made, I learned a few things. So I want to help you so that you don't make any mistakes because there are no extra charm packs to be had. These are were made just for us. Now you'll take your little charm pack out of your plastic and then, then take your little band off if you can keep it in one piece. If you can't, that's okay too. But isn't it cute? So cute. Okay, so lay your charm packs together and fold them out. And you'll probably wanna give them a press, just the, the parts that are folded back. Okay. And you're going to be cutting these in the order that, over, that right? they are on the diagram. So, the first, you're going to take one from one pack and lay it on your cutting table. And you're going to have the same one from the second charm pack. And if you look at the diagram right here, it's, it shows that it's a diagonal cut, one diagonal cut. So, you're going to cut both of them on the diagonal. So, we need a cutter. Oh, this is how it is, guys. Real life. Say hi, Danielle. Hello, hello. <laughs> Behind the scenes, girl. Okay. And this is Margaret. She's my BFF. Hello, hello. Yes. I have lots of BFFs. I'm so lucky. Okay. So you'll cut this in a diagonal, and you've cut two of those. So now you set these aside. Is that okay if I cut your charm packs? Um, yeah. That would be awesome. Those girls last night dulled my blades. Bless their hearts. I love them, but boy. Okay. And now we have these two 
check ones and on here on your diagram it shows there's four it says times four so you're gonna look you can actually cut these two or you can look through your charm packs and find the rest of them but make sure you get them all at the same time if you mess up you mess up and that's just all there is but okay so we're gonna cut these on the diagonal as well I'm cutting this way because I'm right-handed and the di the diagram shows you cutting the other direction but it really doesn't matter that's good okay and then you'll put these just in a stack now when you get to the red one with the dots on it I want to find it so that I can show you here it is you'll have two it shows here? Mm -hmm, there's two it says two cut on the diagonal and two cut in fours oops that one came out there it is okay so just pay attention to the numbers underneath it says times four times two times two times four so two of these are cut on the diagonal one time oh. And you'll put that in this stack. And then these two. Are cut on the diagonal two times. So without moving it, you'll cut it once in this direction. Pull your blade so you don't have to have a band aid. And then once in this direction. And now would be a good time to use a rotating mat if you have one. I'm going to get it for you. That would be awesome. Because I have a few of them and forget to get them. Okay. And then you'll just stack these up in a separate stack. Now that's if you want your quilt to look just like the one on the pattern. So here's the, the pattern that comes with your subscription box and then this is the page that she is using as a direction and notice the times two times four the times two that needs to be cut on both diagonals the times two that's cut on one diagonal and they're all on this pattern that has been sent to you Okay, we'll cut just a few more just in case you need a little bit of a reminder now I picked up this fabric off of both and it says there's four pieces so times four so stack four of them together and just cut them diagonally and then let's pick one that needs four let's see Put those there, and then one that needs four is this blue, right? Either one of the blue florals, like this one does. And it says there's two of each, two in each one. Oh, I'm not finding it. There it is. Huh? Here it is. Okay, there should be two in each pack. There's one. Okay, where is it? There it is. Nope, that's not, nope, that's not it. That one has a dark gray. It does. I just thought that was it. You Almost. see it? Nope. Okay. Well, on this one, two are cut on the diagonal. And that's not real square. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. And two are cut. Not finding it. Not finding it. Okay. Two are cut this way. Still didn't use my rotating mat. 
we talked about that, didn't we? Yes. All right. <laughs> so there you go. That, and we'll find the other one. It's just hiding. It's stuck somewhere. So anyway, that's how you cut them. And if you do it that way, then you'll get the exact picture that Let's is that is the quilt that's right here. Yay. Okay. That's it for now, and we'll go. I will go over some other information in um, in just a minute. We're going to use these double pinwheel foundation paper pieces, and the really neat thing about these paper pieces are that they are on both sides. They're printed on both sides, and that's not something that you normally find. They're really thin, so you have to make sure that you only pull off one at a time, but. You'll need four for each block. So just to show you how to do it, and it's really super simple, and I'll show you how much waste you have. So you have your background fabric. Your background is always number one, and it says stitch one and two together. So you're going to put number one right here, and then you're going to put the next one. We're going to be making, actually, that's the cutting diagram, but I always have to look at the picture itself which is this that will help me see which blocks need to go together okay so I'm going to do this first block right here so I want to make sure that the fabrics just covering the lines a little bit and then if you have flat head pins use them because they they lay flat when you when you sew so that you're not going to have a bump you have to go over and I use two pins and then you flip it over and I make sure that number three is always sticking away from me, up away from me. And then I've lowered my stitch length to 1.8 because that helps you tear the paper off easier. Okay, then you just remove these pins. And have a little hot iron next to you and you press just press that flat like that now you take your number three piece and lay it right here and then I use two pins you can use more if you want to but you want to keep the pins away from your stitch line which you know is going to be up here somewhere and then you take it, you flip it over, start out at the outer edge, and then take these pins out and press it back, and you've already done one fourth of your block. Now don't worry too much if, if it's a little bit shy of this line, it won't be a big problem, but you want to try and make sure that it's okay, um, that it is a little bit over the line. Now you flip it over, and if you have a 4 inch ruler, it's really helpful, but if you don't, that's okay too. You're going to cut on this inside line, this one right here this inside line and that only has one line and this one only has one line and it's a little wonky on the paper but that's how it had to be to make it fit for the five inch squares you'll also notice this diagonal line right in the center is the center where one and two meet so go ahead and cut this off I want to show you also how little bit of waste you have to rotate your board okay this is how much waste you have from your from cutting your squares not bad huh um, when I make the first quilt I learned that it was easier if you tear the papers off now rather than wait and sew all of the blocks all of the the four blocks together to make the one big block so I go ahead and do that. Okay, I'll do it one more time. 
to I put it on there. Okay. So keep a little trash can right next to you because you're gonna need it. Okay. So you take number one, which is always the background. Number two is the small triangle. Right sides together, fit inside the triangle. Two pins. And I have sewn some of these backwards and that's why I picked up a few little tips. So flip it over with number three going up. And sew on the dash line. You get really good at this after you make 25 blocks. I promise. And don't give up. The first few, I was scratching my head trying to figure out how to make it work. and whew, But it does work. You just have to keep at it. Okay. Dexter. He wants out. We're in. Okay, two pins. And then do the long dash line. Okay, we have torn all the paper off. And now we're going to lay it out just the way it should be laid out. And you make it, you make it into a pinwheel. And the way I do that is I just look at these little ones right here. And make sure that this is touching, touching the, the, big pinwheel and the white is to the outside um, it's a little bit different on your picture maybe it was a printing thing or something but it looks like your pinwheels are going backwards and this way it looks like they're going clockwise so these would be going counterclockwise just make sure that you do all of your blocks the same way um, and if you I did have this happen one time on your pinwheel or on your blocks, just remember that it says front right here and it says back right here. And if you sew it on the back and then flip it over to sew the front, if you stick it to the back, flip it over and sew the front, your, your block will be going counterclockwise. So just to not confuse yourself, put the fabric on the front, flip it over, sew it on the back. Okay, so I have it all laid out as a pinwheel. Now I'm just going to fold these sides over and match my seams right here just to nest them together. You can, oh, I usually have my quarter inch foot on. So let me get that. Just use a quarter inch seam and nest your seams together on the bottom. Then pick up these two and just keep going. Make sure that your seams are nesting right here. And you should be, you will have a really good point. Take these two together and match them on the edge. Just take a few stitches and then make sure that your center one is going up and the bottom one is going down toward you, I should say. And then you can see where the point is right here where you've sewn right to that point right there and that's where you want your stitch line to be so sew right over that complete your stitch and there's your pinwheel pinwheel your double pinwheel 
Looks like I'm a little bit off, but not too bad. So when I cut these, or when I do my back, you can just press it all to one side like this if you want, but I like to do it the way that Eleanor Burns does it. She makes just a cute little pinwheel in the center by just popping, she pops a stitch right through here and it makes a little pinwheel on its own. But you don't have to do that, it's just something I like to do. So then you press, you press your seams actually in a pinwheel and your center is a little pinwheel too. And it's fighting with me just because I'm showing you. It's just a little stitch right there that you don't need. There. And that makes everything lay nice and flat. And then as I go along and make my blocks, I like to sew my borders on. If it's the first, this is the first block, so I'm going to start with a, with a border piece. And they're three by seven and a half. And sew it on. Match up the bottom. Kind of make sure it's the same. And I kind of look at my seam right here where my last stitch was for, for this pinwheel and go right along there so that I know that I'm getting a quarter inch and that I'll have my point when I get finished. And see, I, I still have my point right here. So I press that back because you want your seams to go toward the white. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew another border piece to the other side because I'll need one here and here. And then when I sew this um, piece right here, I'll just do a cornerstone and a block and cornerstone and a block and add that to the row when I get finished. Also, when I'm sewing this, I like to sew it with the seam side up so that I can see so that I can see where this seam is right here. If you look, you'll see right where it comes to right here. I want to make sure that when I sew this seam here, it doesn't cut off this point like over here. So I'm going to adjust this just a little bit, and I don't know if that's a politically correct thing to do for quilters or not, but it's what I do, um, and it works for me. So I'm going to make sure that I sew that so that I will still have a point. And then when you get to the bottom, you just ease it a little bit, because this is a bias piece, it will stretch just a little to allow that piece to fit completely. And then you open it and you have your points. So would I would I take this out to, to fix this right here? I wouldn't. You might want to. This doesn't bother me. It's about an eighth of an inch off. And you can pin to make sure that it works exactly. But I'm not gonna let that bother me, and you don't have to either. It's up to you what you wanna do. Okay, we're back, and I hope that that wasn't as clear as mud for you. I hope that was a good instruction for you. Now, I want to do this again for you and show you how important it is to cut your blocks. I've got a few sewn on. And um, I want to show you again how to, to, what to do for a couple of little things that I have. So one of the things I learned, the first thing I learned was to make sure that you go ahead and adjust this just enough that you get a quarter inch seam. The second thing is how important it is to press as you go. 
because um, this paper will withstand the heat and it's it's so nice and makes such a nice flat seam make sure seam go nice and flat now I'm going to show you what not to do okay so here's the block of what not to do see these points right here they're missing we don't want missing points I mean even if you were a perfectionist that might bother you I mean if you were a perfectionist it would definitely bother you and then in the center it's a little puckered and the reason for that I'll show you what that is so what I did with this block was that I forgot to trim it before I ripped the papers off so I'm going to show you that right now how important it is to trim it so you turn your piece over and if you're worried about these pieces flipping over you can always pin them down but get get a ruler a small ruler it doesn't have to be a square ruler four inch fits perfectly here and I've misplaced it so we're going to use the four and a half but <clears throat> you're going to trim along these lines here not this big one on the outside on the inside line is where you want to trim so do that with all four of your blocks use a rotating mat if you have one come back and trim on the inside of the line here the inside of the dark gray line that that's the line you want to trim on now, I know I covered this before but it's really it's one of those things that it doesn't help to see it hurt to see it twice and then you have everything trimmed up and now remove your papers and they come off really easy especially if you use 1.8 seam allowance um, I didn't on the this one on the one but it doesn't it seemed to tear off just fine and okay I'm going to trim up the others just so you can see trim up the dark trim on the inside line now at first I had to use my seam ripper quite a bit because I was not adjusting my seam allowance quite right. You're okay, you don't need to go out. So there's two. There's so little waste with this too. Um, and be thinking, are there other blocks that you would like to see? made with these papers because I know a lady who can make them for us and you can only get them through us so um, we'd love to make some more this is the best easiest way to make this paper pieced quilt it's it's been a lot of fun doing all right I didn't get those cut all the way tear off You like my kitty noise in the back oh sorry here he comes again scooter line up your line in your center line on your little square ruler with the center line on the never cut towards yourself either like I just did okay line your center line up and you'll always um, be able to keep it straight too and one more and then I showed you on Margaret's that the center was off just a titch a titch that's a sewing word scooter 
Okay. And then line up your pinwheel. Getting better at it after a few. Okay. Then when you put your put your blocks together so that you want to have these Go ahead seams. and nest it just like that. And then pin and make it. Make sure that your center is matching. Put your pin right here at the seam where it matches it, where it comes, the intersection. Okay, that's the word I'm looking for. Put it right in there. And then on the other piece, look for the intersection and you can see it really well. And put it right here. Ah, and stick yourself in the finger. Okay, and then you should have a perfectly matched seam. So let's take it over and split. Okay, here's the perfectly so matched seam. So that all seam. looks really good. Okay, now to make, you can press your seams this way and this way, and I think I covered it before. I like to do mine like Eleanor Burns does, and the only reason I like to do it that way is because it's cute. So you just make these little seams here in the middle. You just snip these little threads. That's all you do. And it will pop and make a pinwheel. See, kind of twist it like that. And then you just open it and press your seams in like in a circular motion. So start with this one, and then this one, and then press that center one flat. Your little, it kind of looks like a little rosette, but mostly like a pinwheel. So I really like it that way. Now you're, um, you have steam in these little Aliso irons. I'm not really trying to sell irons, but if you want one, I will get some in the store for you. And they do a good job. And they are hot, let me tell you, they are hot. So there's your little pinwheel. So here's how you lay out your blocks. You start with this piece, this um, border piece, and then you, you, then you put one on the other side. And I just do this as I sew, and so it works out really nice that way. Then you add your next block, and you just keep going. And then above and below these blocks, you're going to make this sashing piece. And you'll start with a cornerstone, and then these are all the same size. So you'll have your cornerstone, your block, your cornerstone, and you'll add them above and below. So let's take one more look at this quilt behind me, and you'll see how well it turned out and get some more ideas and some close-ups of the quilt itself. So here's the quilt. And I quilted it using a stipple design that has dragonflies in it. And there's a dragonfly, you can kind of see it. It looks like it's a little dark back here in this corner, but it sure brightens up this space. And I chose to put a six inch border around it. You don't have to do that. You can do a no border or you can do a smaller border and then just bind it. Uh, the, the quilt itself is 59 and a half inches square. And um, I do have some extra fabrics if you're interested in any for borders. So um, double check my website, search in the search bar. It starts with Feb, F-E-B, and it will pull up all of the um, patterns of fabric that I do have left. So, so thanks for stopping in today to see how you make this beautiful quilt behind me. And I can't wait to find out what we're going to do for March. It is almost as much a surprise to me as it is to you. So um, bear with me and we'll work on it together. And I appreciate each and every one of you. You're all so spectacular and sweet to me. Um, this quilt was born of love from not just me, but from Andrea, who is um, amazing. And I wanna tell you all thank you so much. Have a wonderful blessed day, and I'll see you again really soon.